I kiss you? Yeah. Just like that. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I said it. It was maybe the most single greatest thing I ever done, but thought, I don't care what. I was that kind of mood. Maybe you have experienced it. Where everything else in the day had been so awful that you are in the position of saying, what could be worse? And even feeling a little reckless. Like, why not give a total stranger the opportunity to slap me in a crowded restaurant? <laughs> That would be the perfect end to his very bad day. Oh, day, week. It had to be a good year, basically. I mean, I began to question the whole period of 1990s. <laughs> 1987 was a good year for me. But ever since then, there has been a series of, of I bought a bagel in a deli in August 1986. And the cream cheese was a little bit off. Not bad. No way I wasn't going to eat it. But it didn't taste quite right. I think it started there. <laughs> the next week, I quit my job. Well, quit. They gave me. I was given an opportunity to quit what's happening. I was fired. All right? <laughs> but it was clearly unfair because how can one person be responsible for the collapse of a tight Wall Street brokerage house. Right? It makes no sense. Yes, I made mistakes. And I could have made some decisions differently that might have saved the company in a avoided touching off Black Monday of 1987. But hindsight is, yes, in some ways, it was an opportunity. It was a chance to start over with a new uh, career in a new city. In a new room, in my parents' house. <laughs> because they had redone my old room. They dropped the bunk beds, shaped like tutu trains, which was good. Because my wife, oh, she would never let me stay there if they had, that is, she would never stay as long because she had, we both thought that she had some personal growing left too. And we decided that a trial separation would be good for. She met another skier from Norway named Kurt. Basically, was the deal. And that was good for her. And for our two kids, Jamie and Karen. We live in Oslo now. They are happy. They love the fjords. And do you want some pictures? These kids have gotten so big, you wouldn't believe it. I can't. Actually, I um, haven't seen them since I got out of prison six <laughs> months ago for embezzlement from Burger King. I was assistant managing all of my parents in the early 90s. But I was totally innocent. It was the manager of the restaurant that was guilty party. And it's complicated, but it turns out it's extremely easy for senior management to get away with anything. Really? They blame it on the assistant. It has to do with the way uh, Burry King does his bookkeeping. It, you're probably not sure I said that. Anyway, it was middle security. You could play tennis. It was upstate in the leaves and all the which is just gorgeous. Oh! <laughs> and let me show you those pictures. <laughs> These kids are wonderful. <laughs> I've got them right here. Let me just. No, shoot, I forgot. My wallet was stolen this afternoon on the streets. Just vanished. All my credit cards, my ATM cards, everything I had basically gone. <coughs> but I had taken out $200 in cash. I had that in my pocket. So I was standing on the street, right, with the money. And I thought to myself, I'm 35 years old. My family's gone. My career is gone. <laughs> My wallet is gone. But I am wearing a suit. And I'm going to go out tonight to the best restaurant I can find. And eat 
decent meal. I deserve at least that. And that's why I came here. That's when I saw her. And that's when I said what I said. That's when she unbelievably, miraculously, incredibly said, Are you ready? Can I kiss you? <laughs>